all right what's up y'all welcome back to the channel welcome back to fleece tv how are you guys doing now today i just want to talk about my favorite team the dallas mavericks for a second uh so recently we made a trade in which we sent Kristaps porzingis to the washington wizards for spencer dinwiddie and davis bertans also in that deal we sent away a second round draft pick now here's the thing Porzingis is an all-star talent, right? But he's never healthy. He barely plays for the team. I think he only plays in about 66% of his games. And the best ability in the NBA is availability. Now, I know you guys have probably heard that term so, so many times. But it's definitely a factor nowadays. You have a lot of guys that are load managing or missing games for personal reasons. I'm talking about you, Kyrie, whatever the case may be. I'm not going to really get into all of that too, too much. But the point I'm trying to make is that I'm very torn about this trade. And Bertans and Dinwiddie, they've played about three games, I believe, so far since the trade happened about a week and a half or two weeks ago, whenever it was. And they've been pretty decent so far, you know. Bertans, the first game, I believe he was like three or five or three or six, three or seven, something like that. But he, he seemed pretty solid. But uh Dinwiddie, he's taking a little bit longer to get into the flow of things on the team. And I'm very, very torn about this trade because when Porzingis is available, while he's not the most consistent, he definitely on paper should be a great fit next to Luca. He is a seven foot three monster. He can block shots and he's not the strongest, but he can defend the paint. He can stretch the floor. And if he ever could have returned to his New York self again, he can create shots for himself. Now, since he's came to Dallas, he's dealt with a lot more injuries. And this was the first season where, you know, he came in and had like a full training camp and was able to train in the summer and, you know, things like that. But he still missed a lot of games. And once again, I'm very, very torn about this trade because from one side, you look at it and you're like, oh, you get off of his big contract. And while Dinwiddie and Bertans are technically, you know, their contract together is bigger than Kristaps Porzingis, it's now split up into two. So now in the future, you can trade those contracts much easier, especially like this offseason or the next offseason. On the other hand, like I said, I am going to miss Chris Tapp's defensive presence because while we do have Maxi Kleber, who is what, 6'9", 10, 11 at most, he is not necessarily a rim protector. Now, he can defend the paint somewhat, don't get me wrong, but I'm not relying on Maxi Kleber to be the number one sole rim protector on the team because that's definitely not Dwight Powell. Dwight Powell is a good uh, pick and roll man who can spread the floor somewhat and he has a decent mid-range shot and he can knock down a three if left open every now and then but this team desperately 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 needs a rim protector now if we want to be successful in the playoffs that's what we're going to need and i think what we need to look forward to is this off season when mitchell robinson is an unrestricted free agent i believe the 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 case is that um the knicks didn't extend a qualifying offer to him someone can correct me in the comment i'm not 100 percent too sure but i believe that's the case because he's still on his rookie contract so he should be a restricted free agent but based on what i was looking at yesterday or the day before he will be an unrestricted free agent in 2022 now if we can somehow I, I don't really know like the whole contract situation and all of that type of stuff i don't really get into that too much but if we can find a way to move some money and bring in someone like a mitchell robinson i think this team can go very very far we have the second the secondary ball handler in spencer dinwiddie now now i'm not gonna really rely on him for scoring too much because he's gonna be coming off the bench and he's not efficient at all he doesn't have the greatest three-pointer i believe it's like 30 percent for this season correct me if i'm wrong in the comments once again but we have we finally have another ball handler we have jalen brunson who is another ball handler of course but he's starting with luca now he you know he was a bench player at first but now he's starting over tim hardaway jr and the rotation at the three usually consists of either reggie bullock or tim hardaway jr now right now the lineup with tim hardaway jr being out is luca jb reggie bullock but he just recently got injured 
uh, Maxi Kleber and Dwight Powell. Once again, that is a solid team that's going to get you to the playoffs because Luka is Luka. He's going to do whatever the hell it is he got to do out there, you know, to make sure the team gets W. As we've seen recently, I believe he scored 45 in the last, at least 45 in two out of the last three games. He had a, a 49 points against the New Orleans Pelicans last night. Unfortunately, he missed two free throws and he could have got 50 points. But, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. But he had 49 points last night. And then I believe sometime last week, I forgot who we played, but he had 50 points. We recently also beat the Miami Heat and we've now won eight out of our last 11 games. Now, two of those, we lost one to OKC and the Orlando Magic, which was like super mind boggling to me. But, you know, it is what it is. But once again, we need to find a rim protector this offseason for this Dallas Mavericks team. We're going to make the playoffs and we're going to make some noise. But depending on who we face in that first round, it's going to be tough. Now, we've beaten the Grizzlies two or three times this season. I am super comfortable going against them in the first round. I believe they're currently locked into that third seed. And the Warriors don't seem like they will drop off. So the Grizzlies more than likely will be the third seed by the end of this season and i believe fourth is the utah jazz now going against the jazz um rudy gobert isn't the most complete offensive center in the league but he can definitely get some buckets down low considering we don't really have the size to match up against him so i would love for us to see to go against preferably the memphis grizzlies as i said we have a great season record against them so far this year i'm not sure if we play again but if we do i'll be Looking forward to that matchup. Luka versus Ja is always a good matchup. But anyhow, I'm going to close the video out on that note. Once again, I just hope that we can get a center. I'm torn about the Porzingis trade. Um, While he is gone, I am super excited for Dinwiddie and Bertans. They aren't some star caliber type of players, but they can provide some type of value. Bertans is going to space the floor, and we have another ball handler in Spencer Dinwiddie. But we need that big man. We need that big man at center to help grab some rebounds and protect the paint. And I'm just that's my end. That's the end of my ramble about the Dallas Mavericks. You know, I've wanted to get this off my chest for about two weeks now, but I haven't gotten around to shooting the video for whatever reason. But that's it. I'm done. Let me know what you guys think in the comment down below. Check out my other videos. Drop a like on this one. Let me know what you think. And fleece out.